Hi everyone, welcome to Cozy Corner. <laughs> I can't even call it that. I'm sorry. We got a special guest on the pod. Yes, sorry. I'm just gonna keep this recording. But hello, Colin. He's there. But <laughs> hi everyone. Welcome to Cozy Corner Chronicles. My name is Julia. And I'm Liz. And we are doing a different segment today where we are talking about books that we have read and also our TBR. So yay, clap, 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 clap. <laughs> so Liz, do you want yeah. to start us off with what you have been reading? I do because I've been dying to share this with someone other than you. I think I have blown up Julia's phone for like the last month about Amiko Jean because she is just the books are just so chef's kiss. And honestly, when I pick these up, so I'm talking about Tokyo Dreaming and obviously I went ahead and read Tokyo Ever After. Um, it's a little series. It's only just two books, but it's like Princess Diaries meets Bridgerton, but meets Crazy Rich Asians. And it's so good because I don't want to say too much because it will spoil everything. Like, honestly, it's really giving. <laughs> like, it's if you know one thing, you pretty much know the whole story. But Amiko Jean does such a good job tying us to all the characters and all this. But as a small synopsis, basically, there's this girl and she lives with her mom in a very small town. It's called Mount Shasta. And she doesn't know who her dad is and her mom like always lies to her about who her dad is x y and z come to find out her dad is a whole ass prince who lives in japan and she goes through this little cycle of i want to find out who my dad is i want to know the real him i want him to know me and then she goes to japan and lives out her fairy tale dreams which she never has any and so you're gonna see it really starts to spiral but she basically is a princess of Japan. There's love in it. Um, she goes through this love cycle, heartbreak, re-love, all of it. It's all in here. Both books. So freaking good. And Liz talked about so much that when Target was doing their buy two, get one free, I decided I was going to get them. So um, they should be coming in the mail, I think, by Thursday. So... Um... I will have so those that, in my possession. <laughs> yes, and they're such like quick reads. They really are. I mean, they're uh, clearly they're like not that thick, and the text is pretty big. So like they're really fast reads, and the storyline is just so good. Um, the ending though of Tokyo Ever After, it kind of made me a little bit upset because she was going such a good route. So just know you may be in for some heartbreak. Don't tell me that because I'm the type of girl who will look up the ending if I sense some danger. <laughs> so. It's not too much danger, but it is danger. Okay. I just need to know what team you're on um, when you start reading the books. Okay, I will. What else have you been reading? So I just finished King of Wrath. I finished this. I love it. Like, oh. I finished this literally in like two days so fucking good what this book was so good and the only reason I picked this up was because of you and I you had recommended it to me and I know I like um Anna Huang as an author but like I didn't really decide that I was going to read these because I'm the type of person that if it's a series like I have to buy all of them yeah even if I don't know if I'm going to like them and so that made me really nervous because a lot of them were kind of thick boys but Wow, 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 wow. So freaking good. My jaw was on the floor. I'm so glad that you liked it because I love Miss Anna <laughs> Huang. So, it. <laughs> and she was, okay, like, it was spicy. And I mean, the spicy parts were spicy, spicy. but it wasn't smut. Yes, like fake, mm -hmm. the fake out. We will never stop talking about the fake out. Fake oh, out man. was smut. Anna Huang, literary masterpiece. Yes. So since Julia and I have both already read this book, we can talk a little bit about it. Um, but if you're not wanting to listen to any of these spoilers, I'm just like kind of fast forward a little bit. Yeah. But basically, there's a guy. His name is Dante Russo. He's a really, really rich CEO. Handsome. And 
oh, apparently very handsome. And he's like um a head turner, you know? He walked into the room and everyone's like, that's not the Russo. <laughs> <laughs> so basically he gets blackmailed by um other who other than the main female character's dad and blackmails him with some photos of his brother and a mob a mob boss's daughter and he's like oh, if i leave these photos he's gonna die <laughs> so then he's like okay well what do you want me to do like that and he was like marry my daughter and make Lao's jewels take off so they get engaged boohoo da 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 you know it just goes on to this little story and then yeah you know figure out the rest don't want to spoil too much but it's so good so yeah basically like if people really like tropes this trope is forced marriage i don't want to say it's enemies to lovers it's more like people who dislike each other to lovers um so yeah forced marriage if you're into that that's literally this trope with i love vivian maybe it's because she's an asian female lead and we don't get a lot of those in books unless it's written by asian authors but Mm -hmm. it was really liked dante i love dante's character like at first you're kind of like iffy about him because you're like ah is he just gonna be another one of those asshole ceos yeah but he was not that so yes and that was very good. And then right now, I'm currently reading Twisted Love. And, um, you know, we already have a little passion for Miss Anna Huang. So, but golly, why is she just so good? She is good. And I will say, like, I feel like Twisted Love, like the Twisted series is apparently what they want you to read first. Because I think the characters are technically younger. Um, but... Mm-hmm. They all live, like, all the books live in the same universe, technically, and she kind of scatters bits and pieces. But I will say, when I read, so I read the same thing you did. I read King of Wrath first, and then I read Twisted Love. And Mm -hmm. after reading both of those, I want, I'm just curious to see which one that you would like better and, like, which couple you would like better. Because I feel like Alex and um, Ava they give off similar vibes to Dante and Vivian, except like maybe really? if they were in college. So, because I was okay, so I'm on chapter five right now, and it's to the part where okay, so you know, when he like has to go pick her up, yeah, and she doesn't notice like her shirt is all like crazy yeah. and stuff, and he's like, I just wish I could dismantle her pretty much <laughs> and then he he moves in next door and i'm like oh, are they gonna be in love they sure figure, are you know josh is gonna find out i'm sure and, and all this stuff that so i'm rooting for them honestly yeah they're really cute and honestly i cannot wait till you get to like when they get together and stuff but anyways for people who are reading twisted love that trope is going to be brother's best friend so if you're Mm -hmm. the brother's best friend with a grumpy main character sunshine female character that's like that's like your cup of tea yeah he's hella grumpy he is hella grumpy but i'm not gonna lie like grumpy male (laughs) It kind of speaks <laughs> to me like and i feel like i'm the same with anime it's like grump like when there's like grumpy dark hair haired anime guy i'm like that's the one and but i love it and like for uh tina it's funny because we're like opposites she likes the light haired sunshine and i'm like see <laughs> when <laughs> it's like all of us are hey um so yeah there's that just me and my other best friend we talking about in may now too so <laughs> <laughs> anyways you guys so what about, about you i know what are you reading what have so, you read I, in with the tea. i've honestly read too much so i'm gonna start with something that book talk set me on and when i tell you that this is um smut mm. like it it was smut and it was my first time reading. was it corn smut it low-key was borderline corn uh, like a lot so don't judge me for this because i only read this book or these three books in the in the six okay so let me just explain it it's called the cruel Mm -hmm. shifter verse and it's by jasmine moss or moss i don't know how you say it but there are six books in this series the first three are on one girl the next three are on the next girl so Mm -hmm. 
I only read this book because book talk kept showing me a quote from the book of like a funny scene where it was like this girl should be like it was funny the female main character was the funniest female main character i've ever read in my life and it was so yeah. funny the book actually made me lol with her commentary so there was like a scene where she wakes up after she's badly beaten or whatever in this trial that she has to go through and the doctor's mm -hmm. like oh she should be awake by now why isn't she awake and then she wakes up and she's like boo and then the doctor starts screaming and that's the oh. reason i decided to pick up this book and so keep in mind like i've said in the beginning episode i don't i honestly go into books blind i will not read what the book is about and i will just read it based off of book talk and just be like sure like mm -hmm. let me jump into it so the first book is called Psycho Shifters. The second book is Psycho Fae. And the third book is Psycho Beasts. What I also did not know <laughs> was that this was a reverse harem with four guys and one girl. So I did not know that going into the damn what? book. When I tell you I was reading, I go, am I missing something? I was so confused. <laughs> but the problem is, is I'm already deep. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it. Okay, like if if I'm sticking to it, I'm gonna read it. There's a storyline. I'm gonna read it. So, I mean, it was, it was good. I guess like there was, I just, I I feel like you guys need to experience it because the book, honestly, <laughs> a big portion of it and a big theme of it is like the main character. She's a virgin. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's gone through trauma, and then these. It's an Omega verse story too, which see, there's a lot of terms that even I didn't know. So apparently, there's a <laughs> whole fandom for like Omega verses where there's like alphas, betas, omegas, and I don't know what does that mean. That's the thing, Liz, and I really couldn't tell you because all I know <laughs> is that there's a hierarchy and there's like a rule with like who who can mate and produce air and i dude i don't know so people who are really into the omega verse and listening to this please explain to me because i was honestly just reading it because of book talk and then i was like well and then you got trapped into all of this but i was also like well i'm like already into it and like i want to know what happens with the storyline because a lot of people were roasting the books because it doesn't necessarily have too much of a storyline but i kind of mm -hmm. beg to differ like it has a storyline and i wanted to know more about the characters and their backgrounds and the storyline mm -hmm. but it was a very interesting like smut book um i don't know if all reverse harems are for me i'm not gonna lie because like i said i like books with storylines and a little bit of spice i don't mm -hmm. know if i like books where it's like a lot of smut so mm -hmm. with that being said Maybe I'll try another reverse harem and just see what it's like. But I feel like if you're reading any reverse harem book, it's going to be filled with spice. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'm going to read another reverse harem. But if I do, I will let you guys know. But that's the <laughs> first three books that, I was, that I've was i read. Um, I've read a lot, honestly. I also read a, another book that I saw on Kindle Unlimited. And I just, it's like, yeah, sure. It has fortune cookies on the on the thingy. Yeah, I'll read it. yeah so the book is called the other side of being together and it's by emily cox and nicole allen and another reason why i wanted to read the book was because the female main character is asian and i was just intrigued so mm -hmm. it, it i i love the book it was so there's a I have yeah it was just cute so basically the other side of being together is about this girl her name is may and she is 18 now and she runs like her family store with her family of course like she just kind of works there and she lives above the restaurant and her across the street neighbor is somebody named marcus and Marcus is, of course, like every main character that's a male in these stories is like the hot shot. He plays soccer like he's mm -hmm. super popular. He goes to a different high school than there, blah, 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 blah. But basically, it's a love story unfolding between the two of them. And I don't want to spoil things because, um, yeah, but she's basically kind of engaged 
to this dude who's like seven years older than her because her family is illegally in america so oh. i'm just gonna put that out there that's just what it is you guys are gonna have to read it to find out the rest because there's just a lot of spoilers if i get too deep into it but sounds kind of interesting yeah it's it was it was honestly super wholesome like they're they're 18 year olds you know like they're or maybe actually i don't know if they're 18 they might be younger than that i think she's 17 or they're like i can't mm. remember but they're they're young i think they're in high school so anyways you gotta read it 10 out of 10 i love it so i read a lot so i mine might be a little bit i'm sorry so oh, yeah you and you go through books fast like I you do. can read really really fast i'm an avid 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 reader so another book talk series that I, I love okay I was I think I was texting about this binding 13 and keeping 13 mm -hmm. oh my freaking gosh book talk was not wrong about this one this is strictly I, I know this is strictly wholesome like it's a wholesome love story between Johnny Cavanaugh and Shannon like the river for those who know <laughs> they know for those who don't they don't but it is so stinking cute the female goes through so much trauma and it is just they weren't wrong guys you just have to read it it's a love story between two people who like defy odds and just it's so wholesome your heart is literally just like pounding with how cute this is i couldn't put the book down because it was just so freaking cute and then the first book ends on a huge cliffhanger so be ready like they say in book talk to have the second one ready because you are gonna need to jump into the second book directly after so anyways um <laughs> i also finished guild which is the first book in the plated prisoner series um of a king midas retelling i'm so easily influenced by book talk so of course it's a book, talk <laughs> book um people said you have to get through it so i'm in the process of getting through it it was like i told you it was okay the mm -hmm. first book was okay i remember you said you didn't really like it yeah so not aside, that you didn't really like it it was just mid yeah it's like what's the story about and so mm -hmm. guys i can't really tell you what the story's about <laughs> so i'm not gonna go into that just know that i'm gonna keep holding out and maybe once i finish the third book i will come back to what i've read so we're gonna stop there what is on your tbr yes i actually have so much on my tbr but let's just say some higher ones fourth wing is definitely high on my list but I just saw a TikTok that was like overhyped book talk books. And that was one of them. Mm. So now I'm kind of scared to start it, but I'm still going to read it. Um, Caraval or Caraval, <laughs> that's on my list. And I, that was recommended for you. I mean, honestly, a, a lot of my book recommendations are on you, but like it. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> and then um, Hemlock Queen. Oh, what is that? Okay, so it is. Let me, let me read it. So it is a. Hello? Why is this not. Like, one second. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Just technical difficulties at the moment. Where is it? Okay, well, anyways, one of the notes says Hannah Winton's Fractured Fairy Tales and epic world building in her newest novel, the second installment of the Nightshade Crown series. Feature, uh, I think that's supposed to say featuring. Oh. Featuring, featuring necromancy and royal oh. intrigue. Does it disappoint? Necromancy. <laughs> I would just say, so I, think okay, so I actually, sorry, I keep talking about anime now, but I literally just watched an anime for anyone who's an anime fan, solo leveling, 10 out of 10, um, where it talks about necromancy and like being able to control the dead. And I was like, I've mm -hmm. never known that was like a term, but now I do. Mm -hmm. And now I am intrigued by that book that you just yes, made. So now it I is really intriguing. It. So it's actually a trilogy. Mm -hmm. um, the first book is called The Nightshade Crown, or no, yeah, I think The Nightshade Crown, one, then it's him. No, sorry. The first book is Fox Glove okay. King. The second book is Hemlock Queen. And I believe there's a third book, which I don't know what it is. 
So, so are yes. they, they're not standalones. Like you have to read all three, right? Yes. Okay. Me and series, you know. <laughs> and then um, there's another book. It's called While We're Burning Never by Sarah Co- Sarah Coffee or Kofi. Um, basically, it's about how friendship collides with class and race and work. And basically, the book is supposed to be super relatable in terms of characters and stuff. And it's it's basically a friendship book. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I really wish I had um, which one call it for these. Oh, like a, uh, about about me or whatever. Descriptions. Yeah. I'm trying to see. Am I just like totally missing it or something? I don't think you're missing it. Um, okay. Well, another book um, that I have is Butter. It's ca- it's called Butter. Oh, I've and never then heard about these books either. I'm intrigued. <laughs> it's ca- it's Butter, a novel of food and murder. Oh, ho, ho. the cover looks like this. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, and it's by an Asian author. Yes, it is. So apparently, this book combines a distinct offbeat literary style and a propulsive premise. Asako Yuzuki is another deeply engaging author to come out of Japan, centered around food and distinct uh centered around food, the distinctive and downright fun voice alone makes this stand apart, add in characters that are distinctly human, and you've got this well rounded and satisfying read. Perfect for fans of Killing Eve or Silence of the Lambs. Oh, Silence of the Lambs. I know people who would eat that up because of that mention. Interesting. Oh. The cult Japanese bestseller oh. about a female gourmet cook and serial killer. Okay. Yes. I'm for it. So yeah. I might have if to add that. If it if it's giving um my sister the serial killer, it's definitely going to be a DNF. <laughs> Dude, the- <laughs> yeah. Us. <laughs> that book and then <laughs> Yeah. My last book, since my TBR is kind of long, but my last book is going to be You Look Better as a Ghost. Oh, also, yeah. I got the, I got the, those books off, um, from Book Talk. It's the one with the lollipop. Oh, I <laughs> know. Like if, broken lollipop. I had, if I had told her, if he, and I, I bet, I read the first yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not okay, going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you, Liz. It was mid. It was mid. Like, I know it's an unpopular opinion. I, I didn't read the second version from Finney's point of view. Um, because, like Book Talk told me, I was really hyped for it. So I read it in mm-hmm. one sitting. And yeah, it was it was sad. But like I said, I I think you'll find that the book is kind of frustrating. Um, and then suddenly it goes south. And then you're like... I'm disappointed already. But tell me what you think, because we could have different okay. opinions. Because, like, genuinely speaking, a lot of people were blowing the book up. They loved it. They like were crying. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah. And I'm, gonna, I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you. I kind of already predicted what the ending was, and I like didn't cry. I'm so sorry if that makes me heartless. I'm sorry. Don't come after me. Don't cancel <laughs> me. But it wasn't like it. There just are better books for you to read if you want something okay, that's okay, gonna tear okay. your heart out. I guess I'll still read it and see. Yeah, because you haven't just read it. Yeah. So going to my last book, it's You'd Look Better as a Ghost. And it's a comic thriller following the trials and tribulations of Claire, who is a part-time serial killer who is keen to keep her favorite hobby a secret, despite the efforts of a determined blackmailer. Okay, I see that you're having this like thriller serial killer theme going on. Yeah, I was kind of going in a vibe for <laughs> for a minute, but yes, I'm. I have a couple on my TBR that I haven't bought, and you know, mm-hmm. I just had that huge Target buy and that huge book outlet book buy. Uh huh. So <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. What about you? What's on your TBR? I was like, yeah, go follow our TikTok because um, we're gonna be yeah. doing more content on there, obviously, too. But. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, my TBR is the longest TBR in the century of TBRs. Um, so, I'm going to hit the highlights as well with books I know I'm immediately probably going to read. So, starting mm-hmm. off strong, 
Taming Seven just came out. That's the fifth book of the Binding Thirteen, all that. So the Boys of Toman. So thank you, Chloe Walsh, for now releasing <laughs> the next two books based off Joey and Oaf. I forgot how you pronounce it. She has a print like pronunciation thing. So it's Saving Six and then Redeeming Six. So that's the next Ooh. two books in the Boys of Toman series. I am really excited because everyone who knows me knows that i usually okay so like if there's a if there's a series and they're all standalones i usually actually cannot read the books following because i just get too attached to the main characters Mm -hmm. so the only series i've actually been able to continue on or like want to continue on is in a huang of course that's the only one and then this is the other exception so the, that's how that's how you know it's good the boys of Toman series <laughs> was so good that i was like okay i feel like i actually want to read the next books about the next couples so mm-hmm. that's on my tbr i'm really excited um book talk blew this book up divine rivals and ruthless vows um it's on kindle unlimited both of them are now on kindle unlimited before it was only divine rivals i actually wasn't gonna read the series because I really wanted Ruthless Vows to be on Kindle Unlimited. And then suddenly one day mm-hmm. I checked and it was. So those are on my TBR. Um, next, I do want to start the second book of the Play to Prisoner series. And I think that, that's called mm-hmm. Lint. So that is on my TBR. I don't know if I'm actually going <laughs> to read it though. I don't know, guys. It might have to get pushed back. Um, but other things I do want to mention is I have kind of been on a fantasy kick and yes you have yeah so i really want to read what's called the red palace by june her it's supposed to be like a historical i it's like a serial killer mystery thing it's basically i can't tell if it's gonna be a love story about like someone who's a royal detective and then some mm-hmm. girl but it's supposed to be like that kind of vibe so mm. that is high, high, high on my list. I need to actually buy that book. Another book I actually really want to read, thank you, Book Talk. I'm literally a slave to Book Talk, is Assistant to the Villain. I I saw that. Yes. I saw that. It's everywhere. But the thing is, is the only reason I'm hesitant is because there is supposed to be a second book coming out. And I hate uh... when things end on a cliffhanger. And I think I saw it does end on a cliffhanger. So we'll see yeah yeah, but um i i'm just gonna hit those highlights for now because i think those are going to be the ones i immediately read in the future i like i said before i want to give a reverse harem another try so i might try (laughs) to pick a reverse harem book but i don't i don't know like the only reason i'm hesitant is because i just feel like it's just going to be smut and i don't necessarily just want to read smut like great yeah. and all like fake out i guess um <sighs> like i just i want there to be a storyline but then i'm like yeah that makes sense right but then i don't want to like limit myself so i don't know we'll see and another thing i actually do want to try to get into is dark romance which i was telling you about and actually i should have mentioned this mm-hmm. i read the ritual and that's a dark romance everyone says that's like the intro dark romance you should read and like i I understand <laughs> the fascination with dark. an appeal. Yeah, like I, I definitely understand it. Um, the ritual was good. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I think dark romance is a little intense, and mm-hmm. there is of course a lot of morally gray characters, a lot of trigger warnings, stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna try to get into dark romance because I just I feel like the dark romance girlies they love it so there there's just gotta mm-hmm. be they do because yeah. you know what i have i have um some tiktoks like saved oh uh, for dark romance do you have suggestions for me yeah let me look because like, i i feel like another time i did try to read a dark romance and i told you about it and i had to dnf it like i think it was just yeah. it was too intense for me and i think honestly speaking it was just because the book maybe i that i chose was just full of smut and like i said i would rather there be a storyline and the smut which is fine right um the ritual definitely gave that it was storyline 
but it was like a lot of smut like it felt like it was smut 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 storyline smut 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 mm-hmm. smut, smut, smut storyline and i i'm a storyline girly so even if there's yeah. a storyline i'm gonna read it right and i think i think that's why it's also hard for for both of us to get into some books because of that lack of storyline right i feel like when an author does too much with either world building character development or smut and there's just not enough story behind it that's when we're just kind of like okay like this it it gets old right and i know i know you said akatar is on your list to read and i will warn you right now akatar has a lot of world building but stick it out because <sighs> it's I can't I just can't I can't spoil it I'm so sorry like you're just gonna have to get through the first book just trust yeah, me on that. get I through know. the first book make it to the second and once you read the second like I couldn't put the second book down and then now I'm on a high okay. list because I have okay. I'm like 20% of the way through the third book and the only reason why I'm having a hard time getting through it is because we're back to the world building and mm. uh, yeah so just just get through the first <laughs> book make it to the second you're gonna be happy in the second and then okay yeah I will. Okay, so Taming Seraphine. I've never by Gigi Sticks. Taming I heard is a really, really, really good dark romance. Okay. The cover is and then roses. Oh, okay, gun. Mm -hmm. Oh, handcuffs. Oh, skull. (laughs) Okay. There's a lot going on here. (laughs) Is that a bell? I heard it's super good. Okay. And then there's um The Shadows We Keep. Okay. Um, oh, Taming Seraphine is on Kindle Limited, so maybe I will actually read that. Um, burr. um Hunt Me Darling. Hunt Me Darling, okay. Mm-hmm. So these are all um, I guess so for people who are listening to this and have no idea what books are and what like a dark romance is. <laughs> so let me just explain like a dark romance is a book where you have a very morally great character like we're talking someone who is a murderer or someone who like does questionable things but i okay what i've found is that the theme is is that these characters don't like essay people so if you're thinking like that's what the morally great no it's more like you know if you had a mafia guy and he's like pow powing and then someone like dies that's a morally great character Mm -hmm. so um when we talk dark romance it's usually something like that and then there's a lot of there's a lot of smut involved because like i don't know what it is about authors associating morally great characters with like dominance yeah Mm -hmm. and submission and stuff like that but that's kind Mm -hmm. of the the vibe and like yeah so um if that's what you're into please by all means every book that liz just listed that explain is explain to yeah. us please yeah please read We'd them all and tell us maybe i'll dive into it but dark romance is just a little harder to get into because you just you gotta you gotta be really into the the like the smut, darkness. i feel like yeah <laughs> the smut and the darkness yeah i feel like for me i i like reading very light-hearted books i mean obviously we're not reading many <laughs> light-hearted books but not and I don't mean lighthearted in that way. I just don't like all the I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to explain. But anywho, aside from that, yes, book talk has me in a chokehold. Like every book I see, I'm like, I need that book. I need to buy it right now. <laughs> Literally I'm the same. And so as you know, I have a Kindle. <laughs> and um I have a Kindle like unlimited subscription and I will say it is the best thing that your money can buy if you are an avid reader because when I tell you I be eating books up like I read so much like Amazon is getting a run for their money letting me purchase this subscription because I read so freaking much that like it's worth your twelve dollars that you spend Mm -hmm. so if you are wondering if you guys should buy that kindle you should obviously buy the kindle plus the subscription because it's a hundred percent worth it and like the dark romance books that she was just naming they're like all on kindle like i looked it up and they're all on kindle limited so even if you just wanted to test it out like dip your toe in the pond and then just return it you could because you have the subscription so 
Yeah, and I feel like that's um I'm trying to be like a transitional girly, you know, like trying to do some on my and I don't I don't have a Kindle or a Nook, which you know I debated for a while going back and forth getting one. I probably will get one in the near future, but as for right now, I'm reading on my phone on my iPad, and it sucks because it's like my phone is this big, and my iPad is like this big. Yeah. So I just need something like in between. Right. But I read on there and I do have Kindle Unlimited. So it's, I'm trying my best not to buy a physical book because do I have the space for it? No, but it just looks so nice together. Just nice. I know. And I will say like, that's why I ended up getting the Kindle Unlimited subscription because like I said, my bookshelf was not going to be able to fit anywhere near half the stuff I want to read. So that's why I specifically now only collect Christmas love stories, love stories in STEM and Asian authors. And even then, the bookshelf is still overflowing. So yeah. Yeah. And I told you I was going to try to be better and only get the books a physical copy if I liked it on the Kindle. But it's just so hard. I know, but I will say you're not making a mistake by just buying the Anna Huang books. Like I have all yeah. of them. I'm like I have all of them in physical copy, and I'm gonna read them on my Kindle. So, yeah. And honestly, Anna Anna Huang, if you are by chance listening to our podcast, we love you so much, <laughs> and we try to go see you at the book bonanza, but it was all sold out. Yeah, and you have my last name, so we're like basically besties already. So. <laughs> So if you by any chance, you know, want to come on the podcast, maybe sign a couple of books that we have, you know, whatever, whatever yeah. you choose, like, yeah, we'll pay you. <laughs> <laughs> we graciously accept anything that we can take, even if it's just like a picture <laughs> of your feet. Um, we will take it. Like, so we, yes. <laughs> with that being said, that's what we are currently up to in um, our everyday lives outside of this podcast in terms of books. Um, if you want to find out more about our private lives, that's for a different type of podcast that we could. Um, maybe a TikTok, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, maybe a TikTok. Um, that's not the content here. But like we said, we will probably be doing more segments. We are also going to be reading a different book after um, we finish Lunar Love, which should be next week. So we're excited to take mm -hmm. you guys on that journey with us. We don't know if we're going to do a Spark Notes, but better or mm -hmm. a chapter chat for that yet. So stay tuned. Also, just really quickly before we sign off, um, in a month-ish, a month and some more, Julia and I will be together again physically, <laughs> and we are going to try to do, hopefully, I don't think that she knows this yet, but I'm going to force her to do a 24-hour marathon, yes! a readathon I'm down. with me, and we are going to try to live stream it, whether that means it's on Twitch or it's on TikTok. So if you want to read for 24 hours with us, please be aware. That'll be probably in the next month or so. And uh, hey, Colin. And I don't know if we're, <laughs> I don't know if, <laughs> I love it. And I don't know if we are going to be doing the soft 24 where I've seen people actually go to sleep. Nah, I'm about the yeah. hardcore life. Like I'm down. No, that we're going hour. hardcore. Yeah. Okay. Well, only if we get to have sushi as a dinner break. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And you know what? <laughs> Even better, I'll make it into a vlog. So if you guys want to follow our YouTube channel and subscribe to us, we will have that on there as well. And I actually was going to mention that to you. So it's so funny that great minds think alike because I was wanting to do the 24-hour reading challenge and I'm so excited. Yeah, we're going to get everything we need to do to prepare for it. And probably since we're going to be reading, we're going to have the DoorDash, you know, we're going to be eating, doing all the things and reading. So yeah, I'm going to try to pick my books for that soon so that I can have my vibes going. I'm really excited. So, oh my gosh, that's great. So yeah, I didn't know that guys, but I'm always down <laughs> to read. So um, I'm excited. So with that being said, thank you for tuning in with us on this segment. We will catch you guys next week for when we finish off Lunar Love, read some more of A Little Life and whatever else we have in tuned. We're still in tune. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. Bye everyone. Bye.